Hey there, we're live. It's August uh, 15th, August 15th, 2024. Welcome to Dare a Bit Live. I'm Shane, along with Richard uh, from Rogue Trader Academy. And uh, yeah, let's uh, let's jump into it. We're a little behind schedule today. Got more people rolling into the room. Richard is on the road today. Uh, yeah. Battle scars and everything. <laughs> I feel I feel the need. To, did I explain my, my scars last week? I probably didn't. Um, no, I uh, it's there's a very innocuous um, explanation. I fitted a bike rack to my car, and mm. then forgot the bike rack was on the car. So when I closed the the, the boot or the trunk, as you guys call it, mm. um, I closed it with the bike rack with the bike on it, hitting me in the forehead. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not recommended. So I'm I'm uh, on the road today. I'm visiting my friends at uh, Clearpool.io. Uh, it's, it's a firm that makes um, pretty cool technology that runs um, DeFi match, uh, matching and clearing engines uh, and settlement engines and uh, exchange tech, uh, DeFi and CeFi exchange tech. So some, uh, some old friends of mine. Oh, okay. Well, that's cool. That sounds interesting. Uh, hey, when you're up there, I've always <clears throat> wanted to see. A, I've always wanted to see a hurling match. Uh, that'll, I so I'm in Northern Ireland. I know that I know they have it there though. I know they, they do. do they? Okay, yeah. I mean, it yeah. makes sense, right? So it's a shared yeah. culture. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, I, I mean, I'm not here long enough to to go and do all that, but we should, we should we should do a road trip one time. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, I I don't think I and I I if anybody receives the emails, I think there's an email or two that goes out just saying, Hey, are, are things coming up? I don't think I updated it. So it might be the same topic from last week. It's not the same topic. I uh, was still got more people rolling in. Uh, we're going to talk about something a little bit different. Uh, we've got G Andrea, Jason. Hey, Jason, Vladimir. Good to see everyone rolling in. Uh, let me just start the, uh, I've got some slides here. Let's just, uh, as usual, we'll, uh, We'll start uh, start off with the topic, and at the end of our half hour together, in the last uh, ten minutes or so, ten fifteen minutes, uh, we'll answer some questions. So, if you've got some questions about trading or positions or what we're doing or you know what, whatever you want, uh, let us know, and we'll we'll get to those questions at the end. Just put them into the chat area, please. Constantine, good to see you. All right. Uh, so, what are we doing today? Well. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of a recap of what's happened so far. Uh, I think that we've been, I don't want to say necessarily caught off guard, but we were sort of preparing for a range-bound, lower volatility summer than the absolute <laughs> chaos and anarchy. Now, as you all know, we run a little strategy, which is a long strategy that we started just for you guys here called the synthetic miner where we're mostly selling puts, but we're doing other things as well uh, in order to generate more Bitcoin. Uh, so when the price of Bitcoin goes down, we're going to feel that. And uh, we had a, well, I guess we had a 30% decline from, from top to the bottom from 70 down to what 48 or whatever it went down to, uh, sorry, a 30% decline. Is always mm -hmm. 30%? Uh, so that hurt. So we're down, uh, but uh, we'll see how quickly we can, rec we can recoup that. We'll be a little bit more. I think we're going to be. Really the low. The low was really 48, was it? Yeah, I think because I remember I had some bids layered through the 40s uh, to pick up oh, perpetuals okay. or sorry, oh, yeah. futures. And it, it didn't. One or two of them might have got hit around 49. But um, yeah. for the most part, I didn't get them. I was really hoping to to have like a yeah, like right. a. A crazy wick. I was hoping for a crazy wick down to like forty k, just to scare the pants off of everyone. Uh, but yeah. it didn't. It didn't happen. Um, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is that, uh, yeah, it's it's been a little tough for some people who are, who you know, especially if you're running a long strategy or even if you're hodling, it's like, oh, really? Uh, but I think this is just part of the process. We've had a lot of stuff going on. You know, the we had the the market meltdown two Mondays ago, which caused the big decline in oil and gold and stocks and everything that uh, really quite uh, uh, hurt us a lot. So let's just go ahead here. And uh, again, we're going to talk about a bit of the uh, 2024 chaos. Uh, if you have any questions about that, uh, let us know. Uh, and questions, please. And guys, do, do, do put the questions in the Q&A only section um, at yeah. the top of the, the chat. There's a 
but I mean, for Q&A Q only, it's, it's not a big deal. We, we look for them in the chats and we move them if we find them, but we sometimes miss them if they're in the wrong chat. Yeah, and you've got to realize we're a little old. We've got reptilian brains, so you know, we're not <laughs> flexible. And <clears throat> Yeah. All right, so let's just take a quick look what we've got going on. I've been running for 161 days. We are down. We're down 14.9%, which sucks a little bit. But uh, you know, as option sales, we get used to drawdowns. We don't want to have a drawdown this big usually. But, again, this is a long strategy, so it's going to suffer when things go down. Uh, USD, uh, we're up a little bit in USD cash, but uh, uh, against hodling, this is going to be the interesting thing here. Let me take a look here. Uh, is is it okay that my are are our pictures too big, or is it not well, blocking? Is it, it? Normally, the pictures are to the right. I think um, I, I moved to the left. Yeah, I moved it to the left because often what was on the right was blocking stuff. So, yeah. anyways, yeah, so, I, mean, I mean, I think I think everyone can see the important bit, which is that we are yeah. we are below the red line. And this must change. The the red line is the hodlers, those people we like to poke fun at. Yeah. Well, right now they're so, poking fun at us. So, so the, yeah, the hodlers are beating us. But, yes, uh, but wow, we, we, we will return. We will recover. <laughs> yes. <laughs> General MacArthur, right? I shall <laughs> return. Again, this is this is a pretty static strategy. If you know, if, if you're selling puts, you're probably gonna get beaten up. So. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, we got. And to, be, and to be fair, so we we are long Bitcoin and we are essentially always short three three times NAV in puts. So we're actually in dollar terms always short sort of four times NAV maximum um, uh, in puts. So we're, it's it's quite an aggressive mm -hmm. uh, long strategy, mm -hmm. which is why we're getting so badly hurt. Um, yeah. But we've made some we've made some some changes. I think we did it last last week. We we said that we've rolled some of our in the money puts right out to in the money long dated puts, and we're kind of treating them as futures, and then we're writing calls against them to, to try and sort of claw things back. And yes, we, and we'll look for opportunities to bring them forward again when market conditions are favorable for doing so. Do you, do you want to? Are you able to show to share? Um, because it's not normally me screen sharing, but I'm on an iPad today, so. Yes, um, but you have to be patient, Richard. I have to go one. Sorry, time. Oh, yeah, because you're old and reptilian. I got it <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so th this is the this is the the synthetic uh, minor return for for Bitcoin. This is the Bitcoin return, and the red line is hodlers. And just here's our cash. So we're slightly below the hodlers yeah. on cash. Here, let me let me stop uh, sharing the slides. And um, but worth always worth remembering this this could change in an instant. It could, it could get even worse really really fast. Well, and if we look, <laughs> get much worse. Look, yeah, because Bitcoin goes to thirty thousand, we're we're all going to be, uh, you know, rocking it in the shower like the crying game. <laughs> right, so, uh, no, you know, it's. I mean, this is just one strategy. We've run a lot of different funds and a lot of different accounts. It's, I think it's some are doing I'm great. Optimistic. This, this is, we're going to get this back. If you, if you, if you share your screen, um, come on, Grenda. If you share your screen, I'll, I'll just explain what we're doing here. What, what, do you, what, what screen do you want me to share, uh, Derek? Just the, just the options, um, the options uh, chain for ah, sure, um, sure, sure. for the for the synth minor. Yeah. Okay. You're uh, showing the dirty bird there. Everybody's okay. heard about the bird. Okay. Can you see that? Yeah. So I just want you, if you did bring up the December um, yep. expiry. Yep. So what what we've done we've, we we had a bunch of in the money puts in August that were at sort of sixty five or sixty eight thousand and mm -hmm. and what happened was that the cover became uh, had more time value in it than, than the actual short puts so we took the view of let's replace let's let's buy back those put spreads and just sell naked puts out in December mm. to the to the same or higher value. Mm. Uh, the notional value so we've preserved the cash to some degree um and so when we're saying well these now are looking a lot more like long futures than they mm. are um this is like there's a big store of cash out in in december mm. or a big store of long long delta so and we bought some october um 10 down puts just to protect that a little bit and september too uh, yep Right. Uh, no, I think that's the oh, no, the upside, the call. That's, that's the upside bet that we, you know, we up yeah. just we thought we were going to go above seventy k in, in September. We might yet, but we'll see. Yeah, so, right. so, the, so we've got those those long Octobers, and so, so they're they're helping the margin stay low. Mm -hmm. yep. And now, what I'm saying is, all we've got to do is recover. Uh, if if we're happy to stay long the market, just we need to recover the cost of that October puts by selling 
short dated calls. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're sort of long, we're, we're short puts, long puts, and then short calls to pay for the long puts is, is pretty much the, the strategy at the moment, just to get this, to try and drag in some cash mm -hmm. against that uh, long delta. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we've been quite, a, well, we, we've been less aggressive than I would normally be because we thought it might bounce suddenly. But um, if you then go to the short dated side, do we have any short calls left? Or they all got bought? Back? I think maybe one, just just point one left. Everything got back, back earlier this morning. Okay. I think we had sixty one uh, and a half, sixty two. Currently trading at eleven for tomorrow. So we need to be quite aggressive. Uh, actually, we're also short a put, in, a put. Interestingly, well, that's we get that straight back. Um, that, that put that would massively improve uh, improve margin. I mean, we could. Well, this is expiring tomorrow. This expires tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, these fifty six thousand so, puts. Let, so, so I, I think. Going into the weekend, we could probably afford to be quite aggressive. Now, I yeah. almost feel like I'd rather wait for the U.S. Open before I do anything. Yeah, uh, but once, yeah. but because once the U.S. Open does open, I think what I want to do is aggressively sell um, Saturday or Sunday call spreads mm. Uh, mm. against our delta. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, it, we do have some numbers coming out uh, in uh, 15 minutes. I think the unemployment yeah. and CPI or something. Um, yeah. But but, I th but and if the US doesn't do anything on those numbers, I would go in hard at, at um, 59, 500 mm. or 60k. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, with, with, double, with double cover, you know, away, cover. something like that. Yeah. 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 Uh, and just just to drag in as much premium as we can yeah. Yeah. every every couple of days to to, to just try and because we paid 400 basis points for the mm -hmm. for the October puts. Um, I think. Uh, about that much. Five, well. Five ninety five. Okay, uh, so we need to drag yeah. in like six hundred basis points. So if we're yeah. dragging in fifty basis points uh, or twenty five basis points a day, then that's going to take us what uh, twenty four days a month to mm -hmm. get that money in. Mm -hmm. and, and once we've got that, that's effectively then the October cover is free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know those fifty six thousand puts, uh, we sold them for oh two sixty. Uh, there are thirteen right now. We we could just you know legitimately just buy them back right now and just get probably that. Should, probably table. should. But but then again, you know, yeah, we probably should, to be honest, because we don't we don't need any more downside risk, to be honest, right? Mm. And, and, and it's giving up a little bit of cash, but you know, uh, in the scheme of things, yeah. I'd rather I'd rather have the margin free and not and you know there we are. There we go. We're on the inside there, so let's see if we can get filled there. Yeah, uh, yeah, margin yeah, will, will yeah, drop yeah. quickly. Uh, yeah, and. Consumer. Yeah. So, and then if the US was already open, um, I would have, I would, I would be now selling. I'd, I'd probably sell fifty nine five hundred, sixty thousand, maybe even, you know, and uh, for, for Saturday, maybe. Yeah, and we'll um, double cover. I'm, I'm kind of hoping we take a little pop up above sixty, sixty one, and then I'll sell some there. And, and there's a chance that it might not. So yeah. it looks like it's not going to do much. I might just scale into that. I'll sell a little bit if it's not moving, and then wait. Uh, yeah. Because realistically, if it breaks down below here, we are looking at. And, I'm, and in fact, let me show you this on. It's going to be carnage, isn't it? If it breaks below here, it could be. It could. Well, maybe not necessarily carnage. But I mean, the, the, I, 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 this. The, the, right now, the, the market is, is like a roller coaster of emotion, isn't it? Because when it gets down to sort of fifty-eight, you think, oh, it's going to fall off the face of the earth, and then it pops up to sixty-one, and you think, oh, it's <laughs> it's going to go ballistic, and, and so it terrifies you whichever way it goes. But I think. I I personally feel that what we're seeing in this sort of upy downy action is a, is actually an aftershock of the the shock we had after the Trump sell off and 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 all of that right the, mm. you know, the, you know the, the the Trump speech rise back in last month and then the sell off mm. and then the, the, I think there's a load of residual gamma um, at around here in the market between fifty five and sixty five and each expiry we get to people are rolling that gamma to, to another week or mm -hmm. another month and, and as they roll it of course they're buying positions back and selling positions and they're causing market makers to have to re-hedge as they with um because they they've got a load of delta um hedged against those in the money positions and i think so what's happening is around expiry people are doing these big rolls and it's mm -hmm. causing market makers to have to go in hard and re-hedge re which is of course of course as the futures get driven up and down that's dragging spot up and down i think that's that's my working theory of what's going mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. and um i haven't looked but it, i'd be interesting to see what the cme volumes are like around that because mm -hmm. you might find that it's being driven by by that and it's not lost on me that these moves are happening on a tuesday or wednesday 
and the Wednesday is a CMA expiry. Um, so something something like that, I feel, is is going on, right? Yeah. Um, Even if we're looking at these liquidation uh, maps, there's not a lot of leverage positions going on right now. You know, however much you want yeah. to read into this, you can. It's pretty. It's pretty light right now. Uh, we had a little bit of outflows everywhere yesterday, except for a bit on iBit. But what I wanted to show you on the chart here was that really it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. Look, it pushed up into this area of resistance, kind of came down, farted around in between. It's just farting around in between. I expect if something happens, we're going to go back up to the top here, and I'd rather sell some calls at that point. If we push down here, I expect some resistance. I don't expect it just to plunge straight through unless there was a news event to cause it to do that. So from a technical perspective, um, let's just see if these numbers come out and maybe they will tank it and we'll, we'll you know, you snooze, you lose. But um, I've got a feeling that um, if there's any strength at all, we're going right back up to 61, 62. And, I mean, the uh, thing is, it's, it's, it's August, right? So everyone, everyone's on holiday. So Yeah. Well, look at I this. Mean, there's there's uh, nobody playing. Nobody playing. So, so, so no, no one's putting customers, flogging them ETFs and... You know, dealer brokers are all selling themselves on their yachts or commiserating in their, their new um, <laughs> uh, 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 shanty towns where they, where they all went broke. And um, so it's just meandering around, I think. And I, I, I would just, you'd imagine that vol would sort of, well, I think actually it's a thin market. So you, you'd expect vol to decrease. And in fact, we're seeing vols getting marked down by about one, one handle a day at the moment. Mm. Mm. Um, but you'd kind of expect the volatility to gradually disperse as all this market irons itself out, getting ready for the September when everyone comes back from school, you know, or back mm. to school. I think you're the only person in the world who thinks that all market participants who have any money have yachts. <laughs> mm. Well, I think there's a common, you know, and if you, you, you're probably a bit, you know, uh, you've got a screw loose if you're, if you're options trading on Bitcoin anyway. And, uh, <laughs> And if you're on a yacht, you've definitely got a screw loose. So there's That's a right. commonality there, right? That's right. <laughs> All right. Hey, uh, Tony, after, we've got a few questions here. Is there anything else you wanted to talk about in terms of your theory? Uh, of, of uh, I was just thinking, in term, yeah, in terms of my, you know, Richard's grand theories of the universe uh, in terms of Bitcoin. And, and bear in mind that this is based on no information. It's just my sort of, I would say, I would say intuition, but that's even too strong uh, guesswork. Um I, I don't really feel there's any sort of macro push either way for Bitcoin, right? There's hodlers saying, I'm not selling. And there's uh, ETFs gradually buying, well, and the BlackRock ETF is being sold to people, um, but probably not aggressively until September, I can imagine. And uh, there's a little bit of sell concern around Silk Road, maybe, but mm -hmm. I don't think it's strong. <clears throat> Iran seems to have backed down. Um, uh, as expected, or at least as I expected. Um, uh, probably nobody knows what to make of the Ukrainian heroic incursion into Russia um, uh, quite yet. Because <clears throat> um, I think, uh, I don't think it means much in terms of Bitcoin. I think everyone in Eurasia who needed to be in Bitcoin is already in Bitcoin. Um, mm -hmm. Which is long-winded way of saying I don't really feel like there's any strong buy pressure or strong sell pressure now. It's just whatever people do randomly in the market, right? I think. Yeah. Which which yeah. which is ripe conditions for options expiries to move prices around. Mm -hmm. I, I really feel the biggest catalyst will probably be the ongoing kind of U.S. presidential election, as as you know, polls come out and you try to determine which ones are real, which ones. I don't aren't. think so. No, I, I, I do. come out both both both. Candidates have quietly forgotten Bitcoin. So Kamala has got a bunch of people who really hate Bitcoin on her team. Um, mm. And uh, I say her team, I mean the deep state team that Kamala's the figurehead of. And um, um, Trump in his last interview with Elon Musk, you know, neither of them mentioned Bitcoin at all. And, and Trump and Elon Musk are the, are the two, you know, cheerleaders uh, for Bitcoin. Yeah, but no, they've already I, talked about it. I don't think they need to beat yeah, it. Uh, I, 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 uh, I think Trump. I think Elon's got other things to worry about and uh, and and to be interested in. And I think. Yeah. I think yeah. Donald Trump, you know, has become a politician. Yeah. And so we'll say what he used to say on the day, right? Mm -hmm. I did see that Musk is he's launching some four astronauts into space to do some polar orbit thing, which is quite interesting. Anyways, uh, I digress. Uh, we do have a few questions here. We've got uh, ten minutes left. 
Uh, yeah. uh, question, question from Jason. Uh, a question about Deribit options fees. Why is the maker fee not less than the taker fee? Trading a small account fees are a killer. Yeah, that's a, a great question. And um, so, so just, just so first, before I answer this, oh. um, a disclaimer, neither of us work for Deribit, so we're not going to speak for them. Ah. But I've actually asked um, the Deribit team the same question myself because it made no sense to me. And the response I had back was that, that Deribit value fairness um, over um, uh, rather than um, being generous to makers and and generous to takers, and there's there's logic in in both. Because I know that other options exchanges do reward makers more than takers, um, and there there are two things can occur. So in options markets, top, options tend to be much more discretionary in terms of the way you trade them. So, uh, and if you want to trade options, you'll go in and essentially tell the market you want a price, you'll do an RFQ or whatever, and somebody will show some liquidity. So everybody gets to trade <clears throat> optionally. It's not like you need to have a full market because somebody will always come and show you a price if you ask them. And, and the trading cycle of, of options is way slower cadence than, than um, spot or futures. So you kind of don't need so much liquidity in the market. So there's no real need to incentivize people to show the liquidity. Mm. Um, on the other hand, other, some other exchanges do incentivize liquidity showing, so they get more liquidity shown. Um, but but uh, what you tend to find then is the market just locks up with loads of liquidity and, and no one take it. Mm. <laughs> so mm. It doesn't really, you know, it doesn't really mm. make much difference. It's yeah. funny. I remember when I was uh, equity scalping, uh, there, there were certain ECNs you would use uh, that would give you a whopping huge credit and the market could be ripping and just a small order could show up from this ECN. It would just stop the market in its tracks <laughs> because nobody <laughs> wanted to pay the ridiculous fee for it to get a credit, right? <laughs> so it's right. funny how, you know, a hundred, a thousand shares could stop a, a market or something. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, it's it is, but and I suppose there's another aspect to it too. So there are other exchanges out there uh, where there are lower fees for a maker, uh, but yeah. you're not going to get the same depth and liquidity or tighter spreads. So when you really calculate it at the end of the year, if you're paying wider wider spreads. Um, how is that yeah. impacting your bottom line? Um, so maybe you wouldn't find much of a difference by the end of the year. But yeah, fees fees are uh, something to consider, Jason. A uh, question from Vladimir. Maybe to get the strategy plays very good, it's a good idea to buy long-term puts and sell naked puts against them. Yeah, that's that's another strategy. I mean, mm -hmm. all of these strategies that have asymmetric longs be shorts mm -hmm. all suffer from the same problem, which is that uh, no matter how you construct it, the market will find a way to weave in and out of your strikes to always screw you. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. in general, yeah. <laughs> I mean, markets always hunt your maximum pain, right? So they seem, they seem to. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, yeah, and, and if you think about it, most people tend to kind of make similar decisions. You know, if if all yeah. of a sudden the price moves, you know, you're short. You can see what the open interest is. If you have to adjust and roll, everyone's in the same boat. So yeah. it makes sense that uh, you know they're, they're not well, hunting think, you personally, but you know. yeah. Yeah, I mean, Vladimir, your your strategy, your, your proposed strategy is perfectly legitimate. It's just that with our book. I took the view that the longer term risk is up and the shorter term risk is down. So that's why I, I positioned it that way. Um, and I took the view that probably I'm going to get away with three or four weeks of being able to be really aggressive selling call spreads before it does go ballistic up. So if we sell really aggressive call spreads, but in one by twos, then we can pull in a huge chunk of that premium we, we spent on the, on the October cover and and if we're wrong and the market does go ballistic up, well, we're, we're long one by two. So, yeehaw, you know, that's kind of what um, the thinking. Yeah. And if we look on our risk matrix, uh, you know, we're usually almost always long delta and we're making money when it's going up, even, you know, despite our short calls typically. So, yeah. Uh, OK, a question from Gene. How do you spot market makers hedging from looking at the chart if it's even possible? So um, on the chart. if you well you tend to find that um people who are going to move roll their options positions like to do it either just before expiry or or, or some 
some d- days before expiry mm. because it all gets very um, high gamma if you don't um, and they tend to leave it late because they want to extract as much time value as they can out of positions even if they're in the money um, and so when they do when it does come time to roll they they will they will take quite a lot of delta off the book or put a lot of delta on the book um for the guy on the on the other side of the trade so if you if you go and buy um like a in the money put then you are essentially getting super short now the market maker on the other other side of you is getting is is getting short puts so he's getting long the market and he's got to then sell sell futures to hedge off his delta and and if that position is deep in the money he'll actually enter quite a big features trade to match off the delta straight away because he doesn't want to be left with the delta, with the delta. So he, so if you do a big um, in the money put buy with a view to rolling out to some later date, the market makers has, has, got, to, has got to essentially sell almost the same amount of notional as, as futures as, you, as, you've, as you've bought puts. And so if you've done, I don't know, 500 bitcoins of puts, he's got to go and sell 500 bitcoins of futures or 400 bitcoins of futures um, on the, you know, as you do your trade, which is of course going to put a lot of pressure. So that's why, and, and so what I'm seeing is just bef- like a day before expiry or two days before expiry, we're seeing these one, two, three percent jumps, four percent jumps. Kind of puts me in mind that maybe it's because people are rolling, and it could be on Deribit, it could be on CME, it could be on another options exchange. You know, it could be OTC. Uh, there's a lot of options traded OTC. And, you know, you might have a market maker who's, I don't know, short, uh, just doing, um, what do they call it, uh, uh, covered calls. <clears throat> You've got a market maker sitting on 10,000 Bitcoin, maybe, and they're, they've sold 10,000 calls, which are in the money. Mm. And, then, and then with two days to go to expiry, they're going to roll those to, to, a month, to a month out. Well, that's going to be a, you know, think of, think of the hedging involved. There's going to be like a residual 3,000 Bitcoins of Futures that some market makers got to sell. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, question from Vladimir. It's funny Vladimir put in. He goes, "Here's another cool idea to implement." And then there's nothing. I was like, "Are you going to message again?" And he did. He did. So he was typing. So I was waiting for you, Vladimir. So he says, "If you take a closer look at the premiums for long dated futures, you'll notice that yeah. uh, it fluctuates quite a lot." So you can long those futures when the premium is low and sell in the money calls against it and turn around when the future premium is high. Yes, you can. Um, so you're kind of combining a basis trade versus a vol trade, a sh- long, long dated basis trade versus a short dated vol trade. You could do that. Um, because as long as you cover your short calls, yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah, but, but, and particularly if, if the long dated vol is lower than the short dated vol, that's a nice mm-hmm. trade. Uh, the, I think at the moment, I think uh, we're 61 vol. I think just December in 55 in the short dates, I think, now. I'm just checking. Yeah, it must be around there because I see the D vols around 54 and a half or so. Uh, I think actually tomorrow expiry, yes, yeah, 55 at the money. Mm. Actually, uh, I wonder if after uh, when today slows down, if, if we're going to get a, a, a pretty big drop off in vol. I wonder if we're going to get down into the high 40s or something this weekend. Could be. I, I think. I think if my working theory is correct, and we're just seeing the shock waves of of the the, the conference and the and the moving the moves in July, mm. I think we will. Once all once all of that gamma works itself out, and people get get rid of the gamma, and, and um, then vols will go down, and then we'll wait a week or two, and it's normally no more than two weeks, and then market makers will get bored of bleeding money because everyone's going to be short strangles against against the market makers who are long strangles. And then the market makers are going to want to want to move the market to to cash in, to cash in on their strangles. So, as of uh, so over the next th- three four weeks, any calls I'm writing will be will be covered twice mm. for sure. Yeah. All right. Uh, geez, we're at the bottom of the hour. Uh, any last questions before we? Take off and what is it two thirty? So we should be well. We might be getting a little bit of market activity now with the uh, uh, the numbers due to come out. Uh, I see we're running a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Vladimir made, made a comment here. Unless Russia nukes <laughs> Ukraine, uh, it won't have much impact on the BTC price. I agree. I, uh, I don't. I mean, it's... in fact, you know, here's a here, what, what is the effect of a new a tactical nuke on the Bitcoin price? Good question, right? 
I think it'll be a knee jerk down and then up. But that's what I think for practically any news you hear. Anything, right? Unless yeah. it's any any positive. shock is gonna yeah. be uh, yeah. Risk off followed by uh, by by the dip, probably. Yeah. Um although there, there were some tests done in the fifties to test the effect of EMPs from nukes um set off in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. uh, they were set off over over the South Sea Islands, near near Bikini Island. Mm -hmm. And Bikini the results were quite shocking. They they the EMPs travel for thousands of miles. Yes. And and knock out um electricity and radio stations for thousands yes. of miles. So um to be honest to be honest, it wouldn't take that many airborne nukes to actually shut down all the computers full stop and then we'd all be in cold wallets and figure yeah. out to reboot Bitcoin. <laughs> That's true. And I think the US system is particularly vulnerable because it hasn't been hardened. It's kind of uh, yeah. decaying quickly. It's funny, I used to as a young man I used to work in a uh, a smelter and uh, for a while I was running the vacuum arsenic distillery and that's where we used to make gallium arsenide which is what they coat uh, computer chips with to harden them against an EMP. Uh, actually you know I, I think I shared with you you ridiculed me I'm sure you ridiculed me but you do that quite often. Yeah. I read a book recently uh, written by a guy who said that uh, the whole idea of nuclear war has been totally blown out of proportion. It's not nearly as bad as you think. And they're doing it as a, as a deterrent. So, oh, we don't ever want that. That says yeah, sure. a big deal. Okay. It was, it was an interesting book and I think it was uh, worth, uh, I, I like to hear well, other people's I, opinions. I, yeah. Well, I, I've seen Mad Max, so I know all about surviving in, in the Holocaust. <laughs> There's a new one out. I, I hear it's terrible. Uh, yeah, what's well, uh, Bronco, well, the Iran nuking Israel. Yeah. I, I, yeah. yeah, it's not absolutely not going to happen. No I way. don't think so either. I, I suppose a, a mistake could happen and people could get irrational and something happen. Maybe, but I, I don't think so either. But I've, I've said it before. I said I said again. Iran, Iran the, the the vast majority of Iran's army is is pointed at Iran's own people. Half, just under half the people in Iran hate the the, the well, actually more than half uh, hate the administration. If Iran was actually to declare a ground war with any other nation, the half the population would actually join the other nation. But so, here we're talking about a nuclear, and that ground war is off off the table at that point. It's just out of yeah. screw you. We're doing this. Get rid of you. Yeah, so I, it's a little it's, different situation. It's got nothing even, to do with the even, even the even the mullahs in Iran are, are rational human beings. I mean, they they might have their reasons for um, horrible laws that that. That we we found intolerable, but um, they don't. Um, but they still want to live, right? Because they don't really believe that they're going to get seventy two versions in heaven. They, 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 that's, that's just a lie that they tell their followers, right, uh, to stay in power. So they, they want to live. They want to enjoy the fruits of being rich and, and owning a country. They are, no one's going to start a nuclear war. No one. <laughs> there we go. You heard it here first, folks. So nothing. Yeah, to worry. I guarantee. I'll give you a lifetime guarantee. Lifetime guarantee. It's a guarantee you can't cash in, by the way, but, uh, you know, guarantee nonetheless. <laughs> All right. Yeah, uh, I, any last I, I just I grew, I grew up in the 80s next to an airbase in, in the UK, and every couple of months they would do a nuclear siren test and mm. scare the bejesus out of me. You know, I, I'd mm -hmm. wake up, uh, is, it, is it real? And uh, I used to talk, ask my father, you know, I was uh, 10 years old. I asked my father, you know, uh, what do we do? And he said, Look, son, it's in no one's interest. So no one's ever going to do it. It's all bullshit. So speaking of the smelter I used to work at, uh, there's these old towers there, and that's they made all the the heavy water for the atomic bombs for the Americans there, uh, back in the sixties or whenever, whenever, whenever they they made them in the forties, fifties. Uh, and my dad used to tell me, I'd be like, we'd, we'd drive him by and I'd be a kid. And be, dad, were those big towers? He said, well, son, that's where they made the heavy water. He goes, you know how they made heavy water? I said, no. We start at the bottom with two buckets. And by the time you got to the top, it was heavy water. <laughs> it was a total dad joke, but uh, I still remember I can it. see where you get your dad jokes from, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, any last questions? Please just plug them in. Uh, we'll stick around for another few seconds here because uh, we are a little bit over time. Uh, what's the market doing? Uh, you know, it's up to 59. So, see, I told you, Richard, I don't want to sell yeah. the calls until, but who knows? Yeah. We'll back. Yeah, I've, I've, got, I've got some 59k calls, um, expiring tomorrow. They're, they're, they're a little bit under pressure, but we'll yeah. see. Uh, hopefully, we can 
for me, I'm hoping we can push up through 60. Then I'll start to scale into some short calls uh, that will be dated over the weekend on the synth miner, uh, as we discussed, yeah. to offset some of those uh, costs we have to offset from the October long puts we had to purchase. So, All right, everyone, that's a wrap for today. Hey, good to see everyone. Uh, let's uh, reconvene next Thursday as usual. Until then, uh, take it easy, and we'll see you next week. Thank you.